Hi, how are you? My Watson here from Carwow. I'd like to introduce you to the new Skoda Octavia VRS. This is the hot hatch for sensible people. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through the upgrades over the normal Octavia, see how much fun it is to drive and launch it. To test, it's 0 to 60 time. Now, before we get into all of that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single upload. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price, because after all, it's a Skoda. They're supposed to offer value for money. Well, this VRS starts from £31,500, but you don't want to pay that, do you? If you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can save £3,000 off one of these cars through CarWow. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new car, this car, any car for that matter, and you want to go check out the best deals on CarWow, you can simply Google, help me CarWow, and me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Now, even when you take that CarWow saving into account, you're still paying quite a bit more for this car than your normal entry-level Octavia. So what are you getting extra? Well, you get a redesigned front end with a deeper, sportier front bumper. You get a black grill. There's some honeycomb effect down here. You've got your VRS badging there. You get LED matrix headlights as standard so they can blank out part of their beam so that you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. And you also get some fake vents here. These vents though, these are real. They help smooth air over the side of the car and the wheels. At the side, the VRS gets 19-inch alloys as standard, which is pretty good. And you get red brake calipers. They improve your braking performance by a lot. The VRS also gets black window surrounds, blacked out rear windows, and black door mirrors. Here at the back, you get a deeper, more aggressive bumper than the standard car. Black badging, ooh yeah, and the VRS badge as well. Plus, look, a little boot lip spoiler. How sport is that? and a sort of weird diffusory thing. Won't diffuse anything. You've got real exhaust pipes, though they are inside these massive fake exhaust surrounds. It's a little bit augmented, that. It's kind of like the automotive equivalent of having a boob job. Men can have boob jobs as well, you know, when they try and make their pecs look bigger. It's kind of like that. Here on the inside, the VRS gets some enhancements, including a sports steering wheel with the VRS badge on it. And thankfully, Skoda hasn't gone down the same route as Volkswagen, having those horrible touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. These are normal physical buttons, which you can actually operate easily. Biggest change probably are the sports seats though. I like the look of them. They're quite nice. Hmm, VRS written on them as well. You've also got VRS on the kick plates and you probably noticed some red stitching about the place as well. Not so sure about this fake carbon fiber plastic on the dash and alcantara also known as fake suede trim here on the dash that's all right i suppose on the infotainment system the pictures of the car are of the vrs model as you can see it's even got the little badge on it there and you get some specific vrs sporty gauges like charge pressure and stuff like that for your turbo charger you've also got some sporty aluminium pedals and that is pretty much it other than that, it's just like the normal Octavia. So it's fairly decent on the inside, some scratchy plastics here and there, and a horrendous, nasty, plasticky, child's toy-like selector for the automatic gearbox. I'll probably just go for the manual because that's so hideous. I really don't know what they're doing with that. It's just crap. Now, if you actually want my full in-depth video review on the Skoda Octavia, the interior, the infotainment system, and all that kind of stuff, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth review of the Octavia model range. Here in the back, you get the sports seats as well. And actually you notice, especially on this middle part, the material does feel a little bit budget. <laughs> Control has been canceled because it has been paused for a long time. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for just alerting me of that Skoda, interrupting me. As I was saying, yeah, your material used for your seats, it's a bit crappy. The material in the Golf nicer, just is. Oh, look at this though, back of the sports seats. Yeah, a little pouch for your mobile phone. Though it'd be better if it was higher up because then you could just slot your phone in there and watch it while you're being driven along. Other than that, it's just like the normal Octavia. So, out of room. Really, really big practical car. Good for families. They like to go quickly. We may as well talk about the boot because for a sporty car, it's massive. 600 litres of space. So if you like to go to track days and you rip through your tyres, you can have some spare wheels in the back of this. The only things I can complain about really with this boot is that you can't put the parcel shelf underneath the false floor so it just has to go like that and when you fold the rear seats down there's a bit of a ridge there look you're trying to push things to the front and yeah 
That's all I can complain about, really. It's still impressive, really impressive. But it does bring me on to five annoying things about the Skoda Octavia VRS. Ideally, sporty cars should have the driving mode button on the steering wheel, or at least nearby, like here. But on this car, it's way over there. So you really do have to look down to press it like that. Take your eyes off the road. Then when you press it, you can't actually cycle through the modes by pressing the button. You have to just press that to get the driving mode selection up on the screen and then press the mode you want. Why make it so hard? It's too late or I've crashed like one or the other. This is supposed to be a sporty car, yet when you rev it, it sounds like this. Do you want to see how difficult it is to turn off the stability control? It's not something you're going to be able to suddenly do at the press of a button because you have to do it through the infotainment screen. So you hit vehicle, then you swipe across to brakes, obviously, and then you click on ESC system, then you turn it off. There, that was easy. Not. You expect a sporty car to have a star button and this Octavia VRS does. It's just hidden away here where you normally put the key. Why don't you have it on the dash or down here on the centre console like other sporty cars? This VRS may well be at the top of the Octavia range, but you don't get a reversing camera as standard. You have to pay an extra £600 for one, which is a bit of a jip. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The petrol only version of the VRS gets a front limited slip differential as standard and it's electronically controlled and it can send power, 100% of it, to whichever front wheel has the most grip to help catapult your hammer bend. You get stiffer suspension than the standard Octavia. Also, the ride height is lowered by 15 millimetres, about that much, which helps with the road holding as well. It makes it look a bit meaner. There's upgraded sports brakes with larger diameter discs for improved stopping performance. Skoda has given this car something called progressive steering. Now I can bore you with the exact mechanical details of how it operates. But to summarise, it makes the car feel nice and responsive, yet not too twitchy when you're driving quickly, and then nice and easy to manoeuvre when you're going slowly. The most important upgrade on the Octavia VRS is of course its engine and the one on this particular car I have here is a 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder petrol with 245 horsepower and 370 newton metres of torque. It drives the front wheels only via either a 6 speed manual or a 7 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. But you can get some other engines, one is a 2 litre four cylinder turbocharged diesel with 200 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. It can do almost 56 miles per gallon. Now that car's available as either front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Finally, there's the plug-in hybrid version. So that has a 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine combined with an electric motor to give you 245 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. You can get it as front wheel drive, automatic only. Now, Skoda says that car can average around 250 miles per gallon. Yeah, right, that's not gonna happen in reality. Now, when you plug it in, you can charge the batteries from empty to full in around two hours if you've got a seven kilowatt wall charger, and you can drive on electric power alone for up to 39 miles. Problem with that car though, it's quite heavy. It's about 130 kilos heavier than this petrol only version because of all the batteries and stuff like that. Also, it doesn't get the clever front limited slip differential. So, my question is, which version of the Octavia VRS should you go for? Well, I'm gonna configure the model I think is the best and get an offer back from one of our trusted car wow dealers. So to find out which I think is the best version of the Octavia VRS, click on the pop-out banner up there to go check out the car and the deal I've just got on it. Skoda says that this Octavia VRS with a DSG automatic gearbox can do 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. I'm gonna find out right now using my specialist timing gear here. However, it is a bit wet, so I'm not sure that we're actually gonna achieve that, but Let's try it anyway. Got the car in sports mode, ESC is in sport. I'll just floor the brake, floor the throttle. Let's do it. Come on. Oh, horrible. Oh, and again. Oh, I can smell tires. <laughs> do you know what though? Despite the fact that I was basically spinning my wheels for about two seconds, it seemed like. I did not order 16, 7.1 seconds. 0.4 of a second off, despite the dreadful launch. This engine is pretty strong, you know. It's smooth, it's willing, and it provides power right from low down. It's a good engine, this. No wonder a load of police forces are buying these Skoda Octavia VRSs to use as chase cars. They're quick. I'm gonna try it one more time. Let's give it one more go. Launch control, let's do it. Come on, do better. Oh, no, it's really struggling. I think it's gonna do the same. 
Let's try again. Front wheel drive cars on wet roads. You're never going to launch well. Let's try again though. Looks a bit drier here. Come on, hook. Oh, that's a horrible sound that. What did we do? Yes! Finally, yes! Managed to do a 6.78 in the wet and it spun its wheels. Told you this engine's great. However, if you want a four wheel drive hot hatch, click on the pop out banner up there to watch my video, my favorite new car of 2020. It's brilliant. Click up there to see what it is. Okay, let's see just how sporty this Skoda is. Coming up for some twisty roads now. I'm gonna put it into sports mode. Okay, so that's added a bit of weight to the steering and sharpened the throttle response and the shifts from the automatic gearbox. So what's it like? Actually, there's a good thing where it just flows with the road, even though you've got sporty suspension, stops it leaning in the bends, but it doesn't feel too bouncy, which is good, which means that even on our crappy British roads where there's holes and bumps and stuff, it doesn't lose grip and starts bouncing about all over the place. The steering's pretty sharp as well. It allows you to put the car exactly where you want it and it's quite intuitive. And that diff, woo! <laughs> yeah, out of a corner, you can definitely feel it hooking up and like dragging you through the corner. I like it. There is one thing though, while it is pretty decent fun, the Golf is a little bit sharper to drive. And if you want the hottest hot hatch front wheel drive car on a twisty road, it's a Honda Civic Type R, it just is. And if you want to see my video review of that car, click on the pop-up banner up there. There is one thing I've noticed about this car though, which is a bit annoying. When you start to lose traction and you're accelerating, you can really feel the front wheels skipping and they bounce and it sends a vibration and a shock through the steering wheel. It's not very really nice. It makes the car feel cheap. Come on. Oh, horrible. That's my only major complaint about the driving experience. Final thing to talk about though, gear shift. This automatic gearbox is pretty responsive when you're on it. It really is, it responds nicely. Bit delayed on the old downshift, press it. Slight delay, but not much. Upshifts are instantaneous. Upshift, there, upshift, downshift, delay, just a fraction of a second. We're splitting airs though. Up or down, it changes gears quicker than I ever could doing it myself. This VRS version of the Octavia, or Octavia, Octavia, Oct I can never decide. Anyway, it's still an Octavia. It needs to be good for the day-to-day -day duties and the boredom of just driving around town. So here I am in town. Now one of the great things about this car is that you get progressive steering as standard so you can go from dead ahead to full lock in just one turn of the wheel which is brilliant for doing those maneuvers round mini roundabouts and stuff like that. Now if you see my video review of the Golf GTI you're probably thinking this sounds awfully similar but it's not surprising because they share so many parts. The suspension's comfy enough round town. It's firmer than the normal Octavia. That's to be expected. You do feel a few bumps, but it's fine. Absolutely fine. However, if I was buying this car, I'd pay the extra thousand pounds for the adaptive dampers. That gives you a comfort mode. And when it's in comfort mode on those adaptive dampers, it really is super comfortable. You wouldn't know it was a sporty car then. Until you want it, then you press the sport button and then it firms everything up. I'd definitely pay the extra for that, definitely. And I recommend you do too. One last thing to check though, economy so i can get it up on the screen here 36 miles per gallon it's all right i could put the car into eco mode but what's the point of having a vrs and driving around in eco mode in fact f you eco mode f you it's probably a bit extreme let's see what the skoda octavia is like to drive on the motorway for 700 pounds you can get adaptive cruise control so i'll do that thing to keep you a safe distance from the car in front using a radar that's what i'm doing now it will also steer to keep you in lane. Hands off the wheel. There we go. Stop me weaving around and keeping me in lane. That's great. Makes driving long distances super easy. Now, when you're just cruising along, what is this car like on the motorway? Absolutely fine. Question is, though, VRS, sporty. Is it good for overtaking? So let's say I'm at 50, caught behind someone really slow. Let's see what it's like at overtaking. Here we go. I'm going to floor it. See how the gearbox and engine responds. Floored it. Bit of a delay on kick down, and now I'm off. That's the beauty of this engine. Once your gearbox has changed down, it does take off really, really well. Now I'm cruising at high speed at 70. There is one thing I'm noticing about this car. Quite a bit of wind noise here. Or is it the tires? I'm not entirely sure. Interestingly, I drove a Golf GTR on the motorway recently and it's quieter than this. It definitely is. I'm hearing the noise from those slightly bigger tires because it's a sporty car just reverberating around this larger cabin. 
the sound insulation isn't as good on this as in the Golf GTI. It's not far off, but it's just not quite as relaxing. That'd be more relaxing. Look, now the e-tron. No engine or anything. Hmm, wish I was in that actually. <laughs> So then, what's my final verdict on the new Skoda Octavia VRS? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you're the buyer for the motorway police, just go right ahead and buy it. The crooks won't like this. You'll be able to chase them down. However, for everyone else, shortlist it. Because it's not the most fun hot hatch, but it is easily the most practical. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you click on that window there, you can watch my video review of the Hyundai i30N Fastback or down there for a drag race involving some hot hatches. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on a new car. On average, you could save around £3,000.